Dear guests, today in the Sumerian TV program, we are going to deny the popular belief that international relations began with the Westphalian model in 1648. However, it's both Eurocentric and reductionist. It is simply one of the numerous international systems that have appeared throughout history and its validity is by no means higher than any other civilizations or systems. Despite some people considering hunter-gatherer societies as the first international system to its trade relations and exchange of ideas, we reckon that they were not as fully fledged and developed as the Sumerian city-states. In the Sumerian TV, we consider a system exists when different units are in contact with each other through a diversity of forms such as trade, war or diplomacy in order to create a sort of interaction on a multidimensional level. Sumerian city-states interacted with each other in all the aforementioned forms and therefore are perceived by many historians and ourselves as the first international systems. One of the first examples of international system we have acknowledged of our Mesopotamia and West Asian polities, and especially one of the largest settlements, the city of Uruk. Let the program begin. Please, Paula. The beginning of international relations is often traced back to the Westphalia Peace Treaties in 1648. In fact, this can be considered the minus to room approach in the study of international relations nowadays. Westphalia establishes a system based on different sovereign states that broke up with the religious unit of Christianism, the political configuration of the Holy Roman Empire, and the economic model of the feudal, state, uh, feudal system that until the moment was dominating Europe. Even though it is true that this event led to the creation of the modern international society, originated in Europe and later spread across the world, it is a very Eurocentric view, and it does not take into account that before this event there was already a system of international interactions between the territories that could be understood as an international system. Considering whether or not Westphalia model was the first international system relies on what we acknowledge as an international system. That is why some people believe that the beginning of IR started with the first hundred gatherers that interacted with each other throughout exchange that resulted in long distance movement of goods and ideas and high interactive capacity while others defend that the very first state-like units represent the basis of the first fully fledged international system. As Buleo Gross states, the Peace of Westphalia, for better or for worse, marks the end of an epoch and opening of another. It represents the majestic portrayal which led from the old to the new world. Therefore, this event should be conceived as a new stage of international relations. Thousands of years went from the first appearance of civilization until what we could consider an international system. The consideration of a group of population as a unit did not happen until the 16th century with the arrival of the first city-states and empires in ancient summer, southern Mesopotamia, classical Greece or Mesoamerica, between many others. But what does entail a community to become international system? In the 3500 before Christ, Sumerian city-states began to interact with each other. The creation of more complex political units started with trade, war, diplomacy and urbanization progresses, among others. The instinctive cooperation between human beings established the first global systems. An international system could be analyzed from different perspectives, depending on their military efficiency, their trade capacity or their geographical extent. Systems overlap with each other in time, but not in geographical terms. There could be thousands of miles away, but share some common characteristics, which are now the basis of our interconnected world. Rusunov's idea of issue area will be the concept of different systems coexisting with each other. However, each one growing and interacting in various maneuvers. There is not only an international system, but some of them, as we will mention later, did differ and develop in a rapid way than others. Global systems appear when horizontal cooperation between the different existing city-states did take place, as happened between Sumerian city-states. Cooperation entitles a set of rules to function and encourage peaceful behavior, which will be accomplished avoiding war and through diplomacy. Not only could partnership exist in a political form, but trade in between city-states was permanent to create roads and connections in between them. Later on, these connections ended in the establishment of territorial boundaries, which escalated from independent city-states to regional systems rapidly. 
The first example we had appeared early in 1500 before Christ, when independent Mesopotamian city-states prospering the ground connecting the river, Tigris and Euphrates began to move forward the hunter-gatherers area and establish small communities by applying technological improvements. Seen, for example, in the agricultural sector, that later on the goods obtained from that first attempt were the inflows and outflows trade within neighborhood territories. Not only the business encourages the population to coexist, but the sharing of cultural beliefs, which provoke diverse attendees to engage in diplomatic relationships that in the Asian world political system was based on growing, familiar ties with their neighborhoods. We could say that we no longer talk in prehistoric terms, but the appearance of the first ancient and classical civilizations was taking place. Sumerian city-states are considered by many historians as the first fully-fledged international system, despite them not entirely corresponding with the current definition. In spite of not being as globalized as the modern state, they interacted with one another in a wide variety of forms, such as trade, war or diplomacy, which created an interaction on a multidimensional level. For us, this is what can be considered an international system, different units not needed to be political units that are in constant contact with each other. The area of Samur was first settled by the Ubaid people from 4,500 to 400 before Common Era. Once established, they became the Sumerians. They started founding independent cities in the lower Mesopotamia that continuously expanded taking over adjoining regions. The city-states held multi-layered interactions between each other, either through trade and commerce, cooperation or warfare. By 3,500 before Common Era, the Sumerian city-states began to interact in the area between the Tigris and Euphrates. They established trade routes and increased their diplomatic relations. People in ancient summer worshipped the same gods, spoke the same language and freely sailed up and down the rivers, trading an extensive range of goods, which made their engagement and exchange of ideas and commodities grow exponentially until it created an extensive and sophisticated system. Trade played a fundamental role in the creation of the mentioned system. Commerce is considered by some historians as a silent form of diplomacy. It establishes routes in which, through space and time, not only material goods are exchanged, but also immaterial assets, such as ideologies, knowledge, technology, among others. The geographical location of summer and the proliferation of city-states contributed to the diversification of work and the establishment of Sumerian trade. As Chetil Sunstall said, the settlements in South Mesopotamia were located in a region that lacked the natural resources needed for the production of tools, luxuries, and monumental buildings. Agricultural workers constituted the 90% of the population, therefore needing to control water supply, which led to the invention of irrigation systems in Mesopotamia and created a surplus of crops. The role of agriculture was relevant in trade, taking into consideration southern Mesopotamia's scarcity of resources such as wood, cloth, stone or metals, by exchange of which a trading network was created. The trading routes were established through land and sea, connecting Sumerian city-states with areas rich in mineral resources, such as copper from Dilmun Island, which turned into their most relevant partner. The Sumerian trading system brought about the connection between cultures and the spread of cuneiform writing to East transactions. These first historical writings on clay tablets propagated literature and diplomacy. Both trade and diplomacy were a key factor for the formation of this proto-international system. In this first attempt of an international system, we can highlight the city of Uruk, which was the first unit to construct the characteristics we can find in most city models since then. Characteristics such as stratification resulting in social hierarchic models, the specialization of labor, religious development, and a significant contribution to writing and literature, which led to the phenomenon known as the Uruk expansion, an expansion of southern Mesopotamian material culture to both neighboring and remote areas. A new social and political environment where there was a constant flow between societies was developed by this system of exchange and interconnectedness. As Guillermo Algazi claimed, the origins of Mesopotamian civilization can only be understood within a framework in which cross-cultural exchange occupies a prominent position. The reasons behind the expansion are yet unclear and remain a subject of debate. The predominant theory, however, is that it was the result of many different processes, such as centralization, urbanization and economic expansion. The Mesopotamian city-states were also one of the pioneering areas in terms of writing. The clay tablets that have been found in the region are considered to be one of the earliest written records. 
It was already acknowledged at the moment when they began to emerge that the particular symbols of this writing were, most probably, the predecessors of the symbols of subsequent cuneiform writing. Furthermore, scholars have claimed that many of these clay tablets, often found in libraries, were composed of diplomatic correspondence and even treaties. These letters are one of the first records of highly formalized and developed diplomatic tradition, followed by the majority, if not the totality, of kings and officials of the region. Such diplomatic protocol was aimed to ensure clear communication and avoid misunderstandings among the diverse kingdoms and cities of the region. After the annexation to the Akkadian Empire and the loss by Seleucids to the Parthians in 141 BC, Uruk went into decline and did not recover. By 700 AD, Uruk was completely abandoned. Some say a shift in the Euphrates River may have been part of the cause. The first examples of international systems we have knowledge of are Mesopotamian and West Asian polities, which were home to hunters, fishers, and farmers. Interactions between the inhabitants resulted in the first interstate system, comprised of actors such as Kish, Uma, Ur, Uruk, and others, and eventually constituting a completely developed international system. All things taken into consideration, the complexity of the diplomatic system, the development of written communication, and the efficiency of a trading network fulfilled many of the requisites needed for the creation of an elaborated international system. We would say, therefore, that the beginning of international relations could be traced back to this initial attempt of an international system.